This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Mike Sedita. Hello out there. Welcome to the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Sedita. We are working on episode 127 today, and we have Damian Jones. He is the owner of Revive Therapy and Wellness. Damian, how you doing today? Good. How you doing today, Mike? I am doing awesome. I'm trying to avoid some of the rainy, cloudy weather, staying inside, recording some podcasts and talking to business owners like you. Yes, sir. I know we, you and I have kind of talked a little bit, but just in case you're not aware of the good, what the Good Neighbor Podcast is, essentially the Good Neighbor Podcast was started in 2020 for business owners to get their message out to consumers and other business owners in the area to let them know what they're doing. And over the past now four years, the Good Neighbor Podcast has evolved into a national brand. We're in Denver, Atlanta, Virginia, all over the country. I'm the person here in, in the Tampa market that gets to talk to businesses, businesses, ugh, business owners like you, tongue tied today. I think this is the sixth <laughs> podcast I've recorded today. Oh, um, yeah. so, so listen, tell us a little bit about Revive Therapy. Yes, sir. Uh, Revive Therapy and Wellness is a holistic wellness company. Uh, we focus on massage therapy, crowd therapy, and we also have uh, some holistic uh, products as well. And holistic products like um, like supplementation. Correct. Yeah, we sell tinctures, uh, capsules, teas, uh, sea moss, elderberry syrup. So we have a lot. Sea moss. I dated a woman that ate that sea moss. It was the grossest looking thing ever. I thought it was like the slime from from uh, Ghostbusters, but she swore by it. You know, like gave the whole detoxification and everything. It's great. So yes, so. Tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, have you always been this a pillar of health or, you know, what's the story behind how you got into no, this? No, uh, actually it's, I was very obese at one point in time. Um, so this is kind of came about, um, I actually lost a hundred pounds. Uh, so in the process of me losing a hundred pounds, I became a personal trainer. Uh, all my friends, coworkers, they was like, you know, saw my progress. They're like, man, you should train us so we can, can look good like you. I'm like, okay, so I did it. Um, from there, I sought out to be a massage therapist so I could kind of add it on to my practice. A lot of times, you know, you would lose clients because they were sore, didn't want to come back. Right. Um, so I figured, you know, I could beat them up, make them feel better, and then they'll come back. Uh, but after after graduating school, I kind of never looked back at the personal training and, and stuck to the massage therapy. You know, it's funny. When I first started working out, that soreness would be the thing like, oh, this soreness, you know, no pain, no gain and all this right. other stuff. Right. And I got to tell you, I, I've been training for quite a bit of time, uh, you know, and I just took about four weeks off. Usually the end of the year, I'll take a few weeks off, let my body hmm. just recover. I'm not a right. spring chicken anymore. And that first couple of days back, I, I like look forward to that soreness because when you train consistently for a long period of time, that soreness goes away. Correct. But the nice thing about what you were doing is you were beating them up and tearing down the muscle and then getting them on the table and getting them back in the game, which is, you know, you're kind of double dipping there. Right. But now you're just waiting for your trainer buddies to send them to you after they beat them up and you're getting them recovered. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I have a wide variety of clients, but I do deal with a lot of athletes. Um, I do have some trainers that I work with who send me their clients and, you know, same thing for them. Um, just, you know, training, overtraining and just, you know, life itself. You know, most of us have issues, you know, neck, back, shoulders. Yeah. Uh, so that's typically, you know, what's going on. But I mean, it's recovery is very important. You know, I used to be one of the guys, you know, train insane or go home and no days off until I started getting older. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I need to start listening to my body. Yeah. Uh, but did, never really knew how important recovery was until I actually went to school and, and learned how the body needs to rest and to heal and to prepare itself. Um, so, you know, from there, I, I've kind of learned to listen to my body. Yeah, it's funny. I think what for me, my personal working out and training type of thing, the mm -hmm. two biggest deficiencies I run into, and I know they're deficiencies and I try to mitigate them, but sleep is hugely important. Um, right. I, at one point when I was younger, I was the same way. It was, you know, five days a week, six days a week doing the bro split, where it was a body part at a time and doing mm -hmm. all that. So I did, I did all that. But then as I got older, it was, you know, more more volume, less weight, I help my joints, 
a lot of resistance band training, but right. the sleep is always an issue and water intake. My biggest mm. thing is like, it's not like I'm training for a show and I need to get all the, every drop of water out of my muscle so that it pops. Right. I, you know, which I, you know, I've not done that, that like type of intense stuff, but I've been pretty close a couple times and I get to the point where I'm at like, 10% body fat and I can't I'm waking up in the middle of the night with body, you know with cramps in my muscle mm -hmm. I don't have enough water in there but right. on the normal day my water intake is bad and uh, my sleep and the other thing I always find interesting is <clears throat> people don't realize every cup of coffee like you're supposed to drink you know what is it I mean you'd know better than me it's about an ounce of water to every two pounds of, of body weight right or some ratio yeah, I mean, typically I would recommend like an ounce for, you know, every pound. Right. Um, oh, an ounce for, per pound. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, but the thing I was saying is every time you drink a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. a Diet Coke or a Coke or anything that has that caffeine in it, yep. now you got to up the water intake because that exactly. stuff is actually dehydrating your, your muscle. Exactly. So, so let me ask you this, <clears throat> you know, getting the training certificate is one set of, you know, education. Mm -hmm. How different is understanding the kinesiology of the body and the muscle movement when you're training versus doing the repairing part of it when you're doing the massage? Well, I mean, both of them are as equally as important. And I think that's one thing that helps me uh, with my clients is my training and, you know, my background in personal right. training because I understand the movements of the body. Um, so through my workings, I'm, you know, I'm manipulating my clients and, you know, the joints and stretching them, uh, during the process. So it's not always typically just your typical massage. I do a lot more than what you would get at like a big chain. Um, so, I mean, I've been trained in a wide variety of massage modalities, which, you know, I kind of look at the body different. Uh, I would be consider myself more so of a mechanic, um, than like, you know, a, a massage therapist, um, in the sense that. You know, I kind of help people, you know, get through their pain. I kind of help people, you know, recover from everything that's going on as far as, you know, just the stresses of life, you know, whether you're beating yourself up or, you know, just people who work in cubicles who are stuck like this all day. Right. So everything up here is short and everything in the back is lengthened. So, you know, it's it's posture. It, it's, it's a lot of things that go into it. But, I mean, I have a wide variety of clientele, people, you know, who have fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. I work with cancer patients. I work with uh, a lot of post-op clients. So for uh, the ladies who, you know, get the surgery, you know, the, the uh, liposuction, tummy tucks, BBLs, I work with all those type of clients as well. So I'm kind of all over the place here. Well, and that's that's a different type of massage because if there's tummy tucks going on and there's those mm -hmm. those um, staples and incision, like stuff that's inside the body, you can't loosen right. that up. The fascia of the skin, you loosen that too much, you almost kind of undo the tummy tuck, right? Well, I mean, you definitely can't go in with a lot of pressure initially when they're coming off the table. Yeah. Um, so everything, you know, varies uh, upon, you know, what they can handle at the moment. Of course, as, as they heal, you know, then I can progress with, you know, more pressure and bringing in different tools and machines to kind of, you know, help them for one, recover faster, um, but also, you know, get, get the best results from their surgery. So let me ask you this from your end of it. Now, I've been on the table for this end of it, but I'm curious from your side. Mm hmm. I've gotten on the table to get a massage and I know where I'm jacked up. Like I know right. sitting down, it's my upper mid back, whatever, you know, I know what's going on Right. But from your side. When you put your hands on somebody and start to maneuver the muscle, mm -hmm. how gratifying is it? Cause listen, I on the table, someone puts their hands on me and they go, Oh, I see right here. And they hit that spot and yeah. then they work it. And then you feel it almost like disintegrate. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. How gratifying is that for you when you're like, get your hands on somebody and like, oh, I see you, you know, this right here, this, and you watch it dissolve, like you dissolve it. Are you just yeah. like, that's got to be so incredible. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, for me, just helping people in general um, definitely gives me, uh, you know, some satisfaction. But uh, one question that I'm always asked is, how do you know? And, you know, I just, I'm just like, I know, I, I, I feel it. And it's like, and it, and there's like I, okay, so I came in with this problem, but I didn't even know I had this going on. But it was like you're just finding all of these spots. I'm just like you know your your body is telling me what's going on as I'm touching you. So 
I, and, you know, just from the experience of putting my hands on different people, you know what healthy tissue feels like. Right. You know when there's stagnation, when when the, when it's not circulating, you know when, you know, the body's dehydrated. So you come to know all of these things with, through experience, but definitely just, you know, taking your time, listening to the body, listening to the customer, uh, you know, the client to see what's wrong. You know, from there, you can kind of detail it out and figure out what's going on and come up with a plan of action. And that's always the thing. I'm laughing because that is the question I always ask. Yeah. I'll be on the table, and before I fall asleep, I'll always say, like, whoa, how, how do you – and it's just like it's a feel. It's like just yeah. getting over that part of the body and going, like, yeah, this just doesn't feel like it's supposed to feel. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty amazing healing power to be able to have. Because it's not like a surgeon that's cutting you open. I mean, they have right. a set of healing powers. But that's just you know repairing a broken organ or tissue or whatever or bone. This right. is actually just holistically touching and feeling it and, and making it work. So it's it's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. What um you know this is your day to day what you're doing and your background is pretty diverse. What do you right. do when you're not you know you know healing people? What do you do for fun? Um, I'm I'm pretty much a, a homebody. I'm I'm at the gym. I'm at work. So that's pretty much what I do. Uh, you know, I like to travel as well, but um, for the most part, you know, I, I don't do too much these days. Um, you know, massage therapy takes a lot out of you. So when, I, when I'm when i done, you know, I, I kind of just want to, you know, chill and I have to, you know, gather myself so I can, you know, be able to help everybody else as well. All, all right. So then, look, you're a homebody. You go mm-hmm. train, then you go work, then you get home. When you're a homebody sitting at home, uh, do you watch Netflix? Do you watch sports? I mean, what's the stuff you like? What are you doing? I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm rarely home. So when I am home, it's, you know, I'm catching up on a Netflix special. I might catch, you know, the fourth quarter of a game, but by the time I eat and crash, it, yeah, I mean, done. if I eat, I'm crashing. It, it's yeah, it's done. You. Like, yeah, I mean, massage therapy takes a lot out of you physically, mentally, energetically. So it's like at the end of my day, I'm, uh, especially if I had a busy day, I'm pretty much taxed. So I just want to eat, you know, and, and go to sleep and, and recharge myself. All right. So that, that brings up a good question. So you said after a busy day. So mm-hmm. what is your capacity? Like, all right, give me your garden variety day. How many people are you seeing? Three, four? Um, anywhere between three to seven people per day. So just depending busy, upon mm, go ahead. your busy day is seven people. Yeah, I can I can get in about six, seven people, just depending upon how many, how long each session is then I can kind of, I'll get more people throughout the day. Or if I'm like stacked back to back to back to back some days, then it's like, I can see like six, seven people. And, and I, I know, you know, we had kind of talked about this, but I don't think we mentioned it here. You're located specifically where in Tampa? I'm at 1407 Tampa Park Plaza. So I'm kind of like midway of Ebor and downtown. Okay. So, and, and everybody's coming to you. So all your clientele is coming from the surrounding areas. I mean, like, like I'm in the suburbs, so for me right. to drive to Ebor for a massage, mm. like you better find every spot on me. Like, <laughs> stuff. So most of your people are coming from that area. That's kind of where they're coming in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I have customers as far as like Spring Hill coming to see me. I have people wow. coming from Orlando and Kissimmee. I've literally had a lady drive all the way up from Miami, come see me, and drive all the way back. So like Man. I have, I have a client. I actually just seen him today. He's from DC. Every time he comes to town, he comes to see me. So. I have clients kind of everywhere. That's awesome, man. So, so you know, you're a homebody. You're kind of working. You're doing your thing. You've been in this business, and you have this diverse background. Mm-hmm. One of the things I always like to ask business owners as they build their business, is there been a time where you've run into, you know, some sort of challenge that you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to get through this, but somehow you do and got you to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, just the massage industry, period, is challenging. Um for one, it's a female-dominated industry. Um, right. So me as a male, you know, that kind of is like a one flag. Um, but for the most part, I say my most challenging part was COVID. Um, you can't be hands-on people. I didn't work on anybody for like three, four months. And even yeah. when I did open back up, it was like super slow. But the the worst thing about it, like I opened my company in 2018. Right. Um, in 2020 came COVID. Right. So this is, I mean, I'm literally starting to pick up at this point. I'm like starting to get busy at this point and then Man. the world just shuts down. So from the time that it opened back up, like I literally still haven't seen clients that I had before since COVID. 
Really? Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 been crazy. And I don't know if you know they moved away or they're not here, but right. it, it's it's steadily trickled. So actually in 2021, I was able to quit my job um and do this full time. So just building the clientele has been one of the most challenging things as well. Um you know, word, word of mouth, Instagram, you know, Facebook, I do all my advertising, but you know, I've I've done a lot of, you know, events in the city. I used to work like all the major races in the city as well. So that's how I kind of got my name out there as well. So the Gasparilla race, I've done the Ironmans. I've okay, done those type uh, of races. Yeah, okay, I, gotcha. I, yeah, because when I initially graduated, my whole thing was I wanted to do sports massage. I wanted to work with athletes. Right. Um, you know, I had dreams of working for the Bucks. I had dreams of working for the Lakers, you know, just any any sports team, period, really. Um not but, the Lakers, man. Come oh, on, yes, not the Lakers. Yes, I'm, I'm a diehard Laker fan. I was born there, and I'm going to be purple and gold until I die. <laughs> Listen, the Clippers are going to win a title before the look, Lakers do. I'm not, look, I'm not worried about the Clippers. Clippers can have all the fun they want, but as long as Los Angeles Lakers are in L.A., we are L.A. Well, listen, that's it's funny you say that. So the, the Nets have been – generally better than the Knicks for you know a long time yeah um and even when the Nets were at their you know best you know running the Harden and Durant or even when they had Jason Kidd when they were going to the finals a couple years in a row yeah that area is still a Knicks area it doesn't matter what the Nets do it's never going to change that so I I get that part of it um yeah you know but uh but yeah I you know that's those type of there's pros and cons to that, right? So yeah. uh, my ex-wife worked for the team chiropractor for the mm. Atlanta Falcons when we lived oh, in Atlanta. Wow. Yeah. Very cool because she met John Smoltz, John Sherholtz, Tom Glavin, Mike Hampton, Plaxico Burris, Roddy White, like met all these athletes. Right. But they're a pain in the ass. Like they are <laughs> difficult to deal with. So, you know, we used to laugh and she'd say, I said, well, who's coming in this afternoon? And I said, I'm going to out him on the pot. Roddy White was the worst. He's a receiver for the for the Falcons. Right. And he'd have an appointment at five o'clock. And this dude wouldn't show up until 630. And the guy who owned the practice was like, look, we got to wait. He's our client, which I get that part right. of it. Because once he gets a bad reputation from him, he's going to spread it. But this dude had a clock that was probably set to central time and he was right. living in the eastern time zone. So like that type of stuff is tough catering to that clientele. So having a good group of people right in the area where you live that are consistent, the consistent ones are the best ones. I mean, uh, yeah. that's the way to build the business. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And even so, um, I mean, I'm, I'm where I'm at for a reason. I'm able to help, you know, a, a more of a wide variety of people. And I'm not kind of stuck in this one thing. Yeah. Um, and, I, I, and even though I wanted to work more specifically with, um, you know, athletes, I, I find it more fulfilling just working with general population. I mean, I have, you know, even like geriatric clients that I work with, like their whole quality of life has improved since I've been working with them. And yeah, I that's great. Probably would, I probably wouldn't get that same satisfaction working with, you know, an elite athlete as well. So, I mean, just it, it either way, I will be satisfied, but I, I think I, I'm where I'm at for a reason. You know, it's funny you say that. I mean, there's more room for improvement with a geriatric patient Definitely. You know, like, look, if you're working on uh, LeBron, who's a physical specimen, how much are you going to elevate his game? You might elevate it a little bit, but he's right. already really great. How much can you really make it better? But if you get, uh, you know, M- Miss Sally, who's 78 years old and can't get off the couch, and right. you got her going to, to dance with her boyfriend, you know, you're you're actually affecting that life and helping yeah. to change it and better her life. So. Man, that's a great part about it. I mean, that's what I love, what I do with, with you know, the podcast, with the marketing that I do in the communities is seeing people that, that are engaged with what I do and it brings some sort of joy to them. That I mean, that's that's fulfilling. And I'm sure that's great for you because I know for me, um, I've had a, a 10 different chiropractors, 10 different massage people, probably 30 different massage people. <laughs> and you know, you like some, you don't like others, but you know, when you find that person that's actually right. doing the thing to make you feel better, that's a healing power, man. That's that's yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So as we start to wind this up, what is the one thing? Like if I'm why do I want to come to you versus any one of you said it's a super competitive market? Why right. do I want to come to you versus somebody else? What's the one thing people need to know? Um, well, again, like I'm, I'm trained in, in several things. So 
you don't get the basic massage when you come to me. I'm not bound by any restrictions as to where, you know, a corporate entity would say we can only do this. Right. Um, I pretty much have free range as long as the client is comfortable to pretty much, you know, do whatever I need to do to make sure that, you know, I get them out of pain or help them with whatever issues that they're having. Um, so for one, that allows me to, uh, you know, definitely help them a little bit better. Right. Um, for two, I mean, I can say this is a, a God given gift that I have. Um, Own it, you man. know, yeah, um, seriously, it's like it, it, it came to me too easily. But um, like I, I used to really deal with um, what's that called? Imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah, when I first began, real thing. um, yeah, it's it, it's a thing I don't because it's like to be here. I'm not as good as everybody else. No, I, it, it was because for me, even when I I initially got started and I didn't really know that much, people are telling me like this is the best massage that I've ever had, or right. you know whatever it was, and I was just like, I don't understand, Maybe. and it's like yeah. I have people next to me who've been doing this for longer and even one of my mentors when i was in school he was like you're gonna be great when you get out of school and i was just like okay and my teacher was like you know you're gonna do great and it, and it was just like for a long time i was i just feel like i i wasn't that guy but now i, I know that i am i right. mean I've, I've helped a lot of people even if you just check out my google reviews you can see like i've helped hundreds of people in the tampa bay area and, and i'm looking forward to helping a whole lot more so if someone's out there listening and they need that help, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, best way to get a hold of me is go to the website. You can go to revivetherapyandwellness.com. Uh, we are also on Instagram at Revive Therapy and Wellness. Uh, we do have Facebook as well. Um, my phone number uh, directly is 813-424-0038. Um, text message is better than calling. Um, I would, you'd definitely get a faster response. Uh, but just book an appointment online is going to be easiest way. You can see my calendar, all the services that I provide, and you know, just come and I'll take care of you. Awesome. So if you're out there listening to this podcast, you're in the Ebor surrounding areas, or if you're in Washington, D.C. and you're flying in for the day, whatever yes, works, you need to get in to see Damien. You know, you can we're gonna put all the links and all your your socials and all that stuff in the podcast, but revive therapy and wellness.com. But the best way, shoot him a text, 813. 813- 424-0038. Damian Jones, thank you for being a good neighbor. Thank you for being on the Good Neighbor Podcast, man. Best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Pasco. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnppasco.com. That's gnppasco.com or call 813-922-3610.